she was brushing this small baby comb over the ear and on the earring the first time that I watched that like the tingles just exploded all over like the back of my neck and all over my scalp and the way that she pronounces Anna Luisa is just oh, that mixed with the visuals is just so relaxing and all that sounds of like the hair, like this scratching sound of the hair. It just, oh, it does something to me. It's amazing. So I really love her and I really love all her other content in it as well. It's like all that pampering, like friends, hair play and back scratching and all this just lovely stuff that I really, really like. So Please do check out XOKD. So now I'm going to be chatting a little bit about a TV show that I've just, well not just finished watching, but finished watching a little while ago. And the TV show is Midnight Mass. Now this is a Netflix show um, directed by Mike Flanagan. And it is set Island in America called Crockett Island and weird stuff is happening. Um, it coincides with the arrival of a young man who comes back to the island. His name is Riley and he comes back to the island because he has been involved in serious accident in which he was responsible for a young woman's death. So he's back and he's trying to like sober up. Um, he hasn't been back for many, many years and it's all a bit much for him. Coincidentally, a young priest returns. Father Paul, I believe his name is. He comes to the island to um, lead the congregation Is it, isn't it? Like, I think it might be. 
me this, but I'm not sure what if I'm wrong. So it keeps you guessing up to like the fifth or the sixth episode, maybe the fifth episode. Um, so it's very much like a Stephen King novel, in my opinion. I won't say which one because there is one that really, to me, is very, very similar um, without sort of <laughs> giving it away. But I felt like it was very like Stephen King and um, all the, uh, I mean, the acting, man, like every single performance in that TV show was Oscar worthy. Like I really felt the emotion like coming through each of the characters and you really got a sense of who they were, what they were, where they'd come from, like what they're doing, their motives for the future, like it was, it was really good. Samantha Sloan, who plays Beverly, is it, um, yeah, oh, she was really great, and the priest was really great, and they were all just so, um, yeah, I would check out Midnight Mass. It's on Netflix. And it was, like, one of the top shows um, on Netflix for a long, long time. The hype's kind of, like, fallen off a little bit now. But I would still really, really recommend it. It's great. So now we move on to my favourite thing. And I'm actually wearing it. Um, I'm going to try and stand up without knocking all of my equipment over and try and show you. <laughs> So it is this graphic t-shirt which comes from Last Exit Nowhere and it's the um, soap company from Fight Club. <laughs> so you all know I love Fight Club, like the movie and the book. I read the book recently and it was just, I devoured it, I inhaled it. So um, the Christmas that's just gone my, um, well, Mr. Whisper Audios <laughs> bought me this t-shirt knowing how much I love Fight Club. And I was so chuffed with it because not only do I love the film, but it's an actually, it's actually a really lovely t-shirt. Um, the material is super soft and really, really comfortable. And it fits me just really nice. Um, what I really love about t-shirts from exit to nowhere and I've got a few now is that they're not overly obvious you have to really look hard to see the film reference because it's not like I say it's not like Fight Club it's something really like uh, like not obscure but it's something really like a little from the film and if you're a fan so that's what I really, really love about their stuff. And it's, um, they've got so much on their website that I just want to buy. But I have to wait for my birthday and Christmas. <laughs> so next is my favourite cosmetic. Now, this product I have had for years. <laughs> so it's been sitting in my, um, hair drawer where I keep my, um, like straighteners in my hair dryer and it had gotten buried underneath all of my like electrical items so I had forgotten I'd had it so one day I was like sorting out my like um drawer and I came across this product and I was like I don't remember buying this but then I thought oh yeah it's that stuff so basically what it is where is it <laughs> Basically, it's called Wonderlift by Umberto Giannini. <laughs> so it's kind of like a hairspray, but kind of not. It is an aerosol, and you basically just spray it. shampoo. It's more of like an instant 
volumizing spray. It says for a full volume texture that looks totally natural, this multi-functional plumping spray can be used to give subtle lift and movement on maximum height and volume. It's non-sticky, brushes out easily and can be reapplied to increase the plumping effect without overloading and it's vegan friendly. So you basically spray it onto your hair, you leave it to dry and then you make, then you use your fingers to create the desired amount of volume. You can also um, use a hair dryer to like lift it up from the roots for like an even fuller effect, but I haven't done that. <laughs> um, I basically just use it when my hair is a little bit flat on top, and I use it to kind of shush out the roots, and I've got it on today, so I applied it at about six o'clock this morning, and you can kind of see it's looking a little bit flat, so I'm going to actually put it to the test and see if we can shush up. Let's try. So it 
it's an absolutely commendable adaptation of the source material but I feel like some nuances were lost because obviously you only have a certain amount of time to tell a story but the book was amazing so when I was reading this book the first thing that came to my mind was this would make an amazing like mini series It's really important that we we remember. And even though this is a work of fiction, well, not fiction, <laughs> it's a um, fictionalized true story. So, like he says, he's taken liberties with some of the dialogue because obviously no one recorded what everybody said word for word back then. But it led me onto my own research. history. 